Hi, my name is Corey Shepard. Uh, welcome to my instructional design plan that was created to teach the linear functions unit in a freshman integrated math one class at Del Castle Technical High School. It's a little background on Del Castle. It's a Votex school located in Wilmington, one of four schools, uh, high schools in Newcastle County Votech School District. Um, that means it's got a mixture of academics and career area instructions such as uh, auto tech, business engineering, cosmetology, there are over 30 total. So our students come to Del Castle basically to get a good grasp uh, on a job they want in the future if they do not decide to go to college. So the design plan starts off with describing uh, Del Castle. Uh, my class usually has 20 to 25 students in it. Uh, we use a core plus mathematics textbook uh, that's very exploratory, it's very hands-on. Uh, it's got a lot of word problems rather than just giving them, you know, a hundred problems to do at once. Um, moving on, uh, the needs assessment that I'm going to determine and using years past data determines that students have a lot of problems with higher order thinking problems uh, where they're not told what to do. Um, so what we're going to do is, is design the instruction to uh, alleviate these problems. Um, I'm going to give a survey, I'm going to give a pretest. I'm going to look at 8th grade scores uh, and determine what exactly the main problems are. But uh, my main problem statement is that freshmen uh, must develop uh, strategies and the necessary skills to build on background knowledge, critically think, problem solve, and apply problems to master algebra in order to meet the state standards. So uh, that leads us into our uh, goals and standards and basically uh, Newcastle County is realigning their curriculum to Common Core State Standards, so um, this is really the first year it's it's happening. Uh, our course guide that teachers use, uh, all teachers that teach Integrated Math 1 will use this. Let me just flip to the Integrated Math 1. Okay, so here we have uh, Linear Functions Unit. It goes through each one and it's taken right from Common Core State Standards. And then it suggests problems we do, essential questions to use, what uh, books to use, uh, what problems to use. So that's a very good guide for all teachers to use. So these goals help us. In addition to just the goals, the standards from Common Core, uh, I've determined that my four main goals are going to be that students will use background knowledge to build upon their comprehension of linear patterns. Okay, Students will develop problem-solving skills to solve problems using multiple strategies, not just one way. Students will be able to solve and explain a solution in terms of real-world context. And then the fourth one, uh, that students will show growth in their scores on the DCAS and the pre and post assessment. Um, all these are imperative because uh, they go into the next class and they need to master the concepts as a ninth grader to master the concepts as a tenth grader. Okay, so um, the pre-assessment is going to actually be the same as the post-assessment. It is created by the district. Uh, it has five multiple cho uh, multiple choice questions, followed by five short answer questions. It's no doubt that the short answer questions are a lot harder. They require a lot more critical thinking, uh, which is exactly what we want to strive to. Uh, everything is a real world problem. It makes you explain your answer. It makes you show your work. Uh, it's usually where students get the most points off, which is why we're really focusing on that this year. Okay. We move on to instructional strategies. Okay, uh, it's a 90 minute class at Del Castle, so it's a lot of time to keep students busy. So we have to use a lot of quick strategies, switch things up. So I usually like to do uh, a 20 minute warm up where students work by themselves. Usually 20 minutes with a partner, like previewing the lesson, we call it a launch. 40 minutes uh, in a group, usually we do fours, sometimes threes, sometimes fives. Uh, and then there's usually a 10 minute summary where they either do a problem and I collect it, or they answer out uh, what they learned in that normal day. <clears throat> okay, um, I like to use a lot of PowerPoint and SmartBoard, uh, so just an example of one lesson that I'll use. Uh, this will be for the first investigation of the unit. Uh, it's got a warm-up. Okay, TATS is called the Think About the Situation. That allows kids to preview uh, something. For this one, I do a I Notice, I Wonder. So kids look at this graph, they don't really know anything, um, and they write down three things they notice, factual, and three things they wonder. Okay, creative, they question things. So I always have an agenda and an essential question. I always use the standards to guide my essential question. 
Going through it, we have some review from high school, uh, take questions, and then I like to capture the problems from the book just so they're always up on the board. And when we re uh, review it, it's nice and easy to uh, refer to it. I also use the Elmo. Um, we use a lot of graphing calculators. Um, and then another thing is to really help uh, students have trouble remembering the vocab. Besides a word wall, one thing that we really like to use at Del Castle is a toolkit. So we hand these out, we give it on uh, colorful sheets of paper. So um, the linear unit will be green, the exponential unit will be uh, orange, so forth, so they know where to go. So um, we're not really giving them the exact directions. We want them to think and fill in the blanks. So it's kind of like a mixture of note making and note taking. Um, they really like this. We require it to be on their desk, and it really helps them out with the procedural stuff. Not really what we're going for, but you need to master the procedural stuff to master uh, critical thinking and high order thinking. So going back, okay, uh, I want to definitely do a lot of differentiation uh, this year, okay, giving students options uh, for the visual learners, okay, they can make a graph or problem for a uh, audio uh, type student, they could uh, talk it out with the student, um, for a tactile student we could give them a table, have them make a graph, have them uh, use algebra tiles, many different things we could do with hands-on using rulers, scissors, uh, things like that. Besides that, I like to use a lot of grouping. I want to get students uh, together. I want them talking. I want them questioning. I want them collaborating. I don't really want them asking me a lot of questions. They shouldn't ask me questions. They should ask the students a lot of questions. So uh, I'm there to help when they're really, really stuck. I'm not there to answer every question they have. It's more like a facilitator and the students uh, are kind of the teachers. They teach themselves. Okay. Moving on, basically the uh, main objectives I mentioned, I split that up into uh, objectives and then kind of plan out what's going to go on in that day. Sometimes lessons take more than one day, usually. Um, so we have the three objectives that I mentioned, the three plans, once again with the warm-up, the launch, the group activity, and the summary. Um, <clears throat> and motivation is a big key of what we do at Del Castle. Uh, I'm going to motivate by doing a lot of... Uh, you know, hands-on activities, uh, a lot of rewards that I don't mention beforehand. I just kind of do a lot of caught being good things. Uh, I motivate students by intrinsic motivation, so letting them know that what they do uh, is really going to better themselves, uh, going to better their shop area, and you know, lead them to a better life. Uh, I also like to try to be as funny as I can. They they call me nerdy, corny a lot, but if it makes them smile, if it makes them laugh, uh, you know, if it gets them engaged, I'll do whatever is necessary. So, um, like I said, we were using the Core Plus textbook. Uh, looks like this. Basically, it's a lot of word problems. Okay, you move through it. Um, it's a lot of real world examples. Uh, it gets a lot of sports. It gets a lot of. Uh, it's equally divided between girls and guys interests. Uh, it's very visual, as you can see. You don't see a lot of numbers. Okay, you see a lot of word problems. A lot of uh, tying into science and physics, things like that. A lot of graphs, a lot of tables, word problems, equations. So um, it has a ton of problems for them to do. It has a ton of uh, extra practice, ton of preview, review, looking to middle school math, looking to future classes. Um, students struggle with it, but I think if we focus on uh, more of the critical thinking problems than the, you know, what's five plus five questions, then uh, we might do a lot better this year. So, uh, reflecting on this plan, uh, I really cannot wait to use it. Um, I think I'm going to mix up my instruction a lot more. I think I'm going to mix up the strategies more. I think students are really going to feed off of that. Um, I'm going to use the DCAS scores, the pre and post test. I'm going to use surveys, uh, formative assessments, all basically to you know, answer the question, is this plan successful? And if there needs tweaking, absolutely, from year to year, uh, that will happen. The one great thing about Del Castle is that uh, the faculty is so uh, collaborative. We share everything, we, we talk, we plan everything, we make quizzes together. Uh, it's amazing. So that's one thing that I know that my uh, cluster of math teachers can help out with. So uh, I hope you enjoyed my instructional design plan. Once again, this is for Del Castle Technical High School and I think it's really going to help out. Thank you.